Thank you for coming along with us this weekend. We had so many activities that we did. Uh, we finished uh, painting all the chairs and um, we also uh, worked on getting the uh, uh, miter, miter saw set up with wings so we can handle much longer pieces of, of wood. Uh, we also cleaned up all of the uh, uh, surplus reclaimed lumber that was uh, picked up last week. Um, boy, many projects going on. The, uh, the uh, range hood vent in the kitchen was uh, converted. It, the, the existing one was blowing in your face and it turns out as I took it apart I found out I could turn it so it would blow up and there was an existing vent and so I hooked it up that way and Gabriel here was along helping me with some of these things. Uh, today I did a community outreach. There's uh, an organization called Higher Ground in Anaheim here in Southern California that um, is setting up a new facility and they needed some help working on uh, getting some drywall and fiberglass uh, insulation hung. So I was over there with another guy and we spent uh, the afternoon hanging drywall and putting up insulation. Uh, but uh, hope you enjoyed all the videos uh, from this. This is going to be kind of like a throw together video uh, for all these things and um, we'll come back after that. Hey, this is Andrew. Welcome to my shop. Hanging with my boy Gabriel. And uh, we're getting ready to finally install the drawer. I uh, put made some struts to go in between the legs. And I uh, made some pocket holes, you can see there. And I put some uh, screws in so they're ready to go, these little screws here. And now uh, we're going to put them in, set them in place, and then uh, get ready to receive the drawer, which is what we're doing today. Uh, we go. I've got my super long square drive on my new Makita driver. <laughs> inch to spare. I've got three quarter inch spacers in the bottom. I learned a new technique on how to put these drawer slider in really quick and easy. I'll check that out today. My holes a little too deep. Um, all right, so the other side. Turn the camera. Now the next trick is on this this leg here.
Okay, here we are back in the shop. It's uh, New Year's Day, and uh, we're trying to wrap up all of our little projects. And um, I got the uh, cross braces in, going between the behind the legs, and those uh, those came out great. These screws are sticking out a little bit. I have to back those off a smidge, but uh, but I figured out uh, how I'm going to put the drawers in. In fact, I saw a, a, a tip over on Jay Baker's. Um, YouTube channel he had just built a huge cabinet where his miter saw goes and he showed a trick on how to install these drawer sliders really fast and he actually he put the entire drawer slider unit on the cabinet sides in his uh, his cabinet put them both sides in and then he set up uh, little spacers like this slid his entire drawer in so that it was tight against the sliders and then slowly pulled the drawers out and as he did that the sliders came out with it and then as each hole here was exposed he put a screw in and he slowly pulled out little by little by little to get all the screws put in and uh, it, it saved him a tremendous amount of time because the instructions say to separate these two right? you, if you pull them all the way out there's a release mechanism somewhere. somewhere. Here, this thing. This little, this little lever here is a release. That's how you can separate the two. There, like that, it come apart. But um, his and that I've, that's how I did all the rest of these drawers. So this guy was done that way. And but his technique, man, it'll save me. It cut the whole process in half. So I'm gonna give that a shot today. And but the trick is, you gotta have. Uh, some sort of a standard height where the sliders go and I figured out that one of my boxes that's going to go in the drawer is actually a good height to put it right up against there and uh, pull the slider in place right there up against the front edge put some screws in it and I'm going to try the same trick that he did so here goes. Okay, so I got the uh, right side in. Um, it was a little bit of a challenge. Um, and part of it, of course, is I've left this drawer in. If I took this out, I bet it would be easier. But it's full of tools, and I don't really want to pull it out if I don't have to. So, um, so I've got the uh, slider in. It's resting on my box at a two and a half inch height. And it's the same height as the other side. And I've got it fully extended which exposes the front hole here on the bracket that mounts on the back, uh, on, mounts on the leg and the brace. And so that allows me to come in with my screw. And then I put a clamp in to make sure it stays in good position. So I can put in my uh, screws here with a star drive. Don't try to use Phillips screws or something like this. You'll drive yourself nuts because the thing just won't stay engaged in the head of the screw. Whereas you use a star drive and it'll never pop out. Never pop out. Bane of my existence. Okay, so that's the front one. I can take the clamp off. It's done its job. It's gotten me started. And um, the next trick then is to come in for the back screw. Which can, there's a few back there. I've got my flashlight in, so I can see what I'm doing. And now I just gotta get a screw back in there. I kinda like to get into the uh, tight spaces, it's part of my existence. Okay, so my first attempt to slide it in, uh, my spacers slid back in the drawer, so I was losing my front lip on the spacer. So I'm going to put a couple of screws in here right in the end, just a little bit, just so they'll stay on the front edge of my box below. I don't want these to disappear. 
stick around so that way they'll I can hook them on the box just like that back here and they'll disappear on me okay so and then what in the uh, pulling the box out the sliders came with it so so that part of the experiment is working here we go take the box carefully Spacer screen. You're supposed to come on this pick. Okay, that's as far back as we'll go. There we go. The, um, the back leg is kind of pushing, uh, but that's okay. This one I actually uh, cut out part of the back leg. That's why it goes back a little further, but that's okay. This way I've got a way to pull on it, so that's good. Uh, so now. Here we go. The trick is, the way he did it, is once he got the box in, he started pulling on it. And the sides, oop, the sides just came with it. There we go. I'm gonna grab the ends just to give myself some insurance. Yeah, it came well. Came along well on both sides. It's about the same position. I'm going to adjust this one to match. So they're kind of the same. Right? Or should I? Yeah. It will be the same. Alright, the screws that came with it are, uh, this is the screws that came in the, in the kit. And um, I'm using 716 OSB for these cabinets. I can't use the big, long, heavy screws that I have. But that's okay. I'll grab my little uh, electric screwdriver right here, this guy, which is awesome. If you haven't seen one of these, this is DeWalt's brand electric screwdriver. The way it works is there's a button you press, and in whichever direction you twist it after you press the button, that's the direction the, the head goes. So it's clockwise, counterclockwise. It's amazing. Super high tech. You don't have to worry about finding some reverse switch. If you're screwing in something, you just put it in there and then give it a twist. Press the button and twist. That's all I gotta do. There's even a lock button so it doesn't get turned off by accident. Alright, I'm gonna put it in here. Let's start with Phillips. Well, it's hard to put in. Okay. Right here, put this one in. Same trick. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do a <laughs> quick test just to make sure I'm doing this right. Push all the way back. Yeah, it's the same position. Pull it out. And I'll push my spacers back to make sure they stay. So that the next screw will be in the right spot. And uh, there I've just revealed the second hole on the slider. In fact let me move the camera over so you can see what I'm doing. Here we go. So here's the uh, left side of the drawer. I'm going to take my uh, electric screwdriver. It's got a little release so you can put it into a pistol grip mode. So it's the same thing, but now it's in a pistol grip. It's easier to operate. Everything else is the same. And uh, you can see I revealed the side, second side screw. So now I can put that one in. really hard on these silly things because they're Phillips. Uh, there's that one. I'll put the other one in. And by the way, you know, these, these sliders I got, um, these are heavy duty sliders, but they make two kinds. They have one that has a soft close, which is in uh, Home Depot. It's a, 
It's an extra piece of blue plastic apparatus that's built into the back end of the slider. And then they have these that do not do soft close. And the difference is the soft close maximum weight rating is 50 pounds, and these are 100. And this drawer, all these drawers are heavy and full of tools. So in the interest of ensuring that these don't ever fall down, I got the, the 100 pound slider. So pay attention to that when you're looking at buying these sliders for your shop. Make sure you're getting the 100 pound sliders. They're actually cheaper. can see it on this side of the camera. Yeah, there's a little square hole here and it reveals the back hole of the uh, side rail that attaches to the drawer. So I can just go through this hole and of course I drop a screw. Let's try that again. Spacers up. I've done the job. There. Now the drawer, hopefully. I'll go all the way in. Come all the way out. Look at that. Now notice though when I pull out the top one though, it binds right there. So I can't pull both drawers out at the same time. I'm not a good thing. I'm going to both drawers open at the same time. There you can see this one. It's all the way out. This is a 5 8 inch OSB, so it's a much heavier box, but we can see. Can you see that? Yeah. So this box is full out. Here's the back edge. The back edge is right here of the box. It's fully exposed. So everything in the whole drawer is fully visible. And you're setting up a toolboxes in your workshop, you absolutely want full exposure. So you can see that, right? Yeah, sort of. The whole box is fully exposed. So yay. Let me uh, reset the camera and I'll show you how I'm going to use this to put everything away. Okay, so here we are. As you can see the drawer is, is fully out. And uh, it's easy to move in and out. It doesn't bind in any way. Yeah, I'm really happy with how this is working. So uh, let's start putting stuff in. So I've got my... Uh, Cleaners. Slide in here. This is the, the biggest one. This is the one I used for the uh, mahogany buffet. That one's actually uh, a little too big, but it still fits. These, fortunately, are exactly two and a half inches wide, so they fit right in there. And then uh, some of my grandfather's cleaners. My dad's cleaner. There's another one just like it. That's all good. Got some uh, rasp wood files here in the middle. That all set. What else goes in here? Okay, so then we got this drawer. All the staple hardware. Tray to go in here to hold those because there's a whole slew 
of those. I, I need to take those two first before I introduce those into here, but there we go. In and done. <sighs> That's awesome. Okay, so we have a bunch of other projects going on here around the workshop. I'm going to bring the camera around and show you some of the other progress that's going on. <clears throat> okay, so uh, back on the <clears throat> mahogany buffet project. I've got my iron here, uh, just warming up. It's set to the, I don't know, it's not set. It needs to be set to the cotton setting. I did an experiment somewhere. Where did it go? There it is. So I did an experiment, as you saw in the last uh, video, where I, I uh, pre-finished uh, these two pieces, and then after they were dried, I, I set them down. Uh, I'll put a picture as an overlay, and the finish though, while it was glossy before, it um, the heat of the iron just destroyed the finish. I did a third one where I did the finish afterwards, and that came out much better. And here's a, here's another test. I uh, applied it first, and then I did a rub down with steel wool, and then I applied the finish, and that came out beautiful. So the polyurethane does not survive the heat of the iron. <clears throat> so that does not work. I'm trying to decide how to do this. Right, I've got this 50 foot roll. Uh, I suppose I could just start putting it up and then sticking it in place. And cut it off at the end. It goes really fast. As soon as you touch it with a hot iron, it just sticks right in place and you're, you're done really quick. I might just actually start here in the middle. I'm going to give this thing a minute. It's got a light to show me. Oh no, it's here. Okay, it's ready. All right, I'm going to apply some heat right here.
the iron to get the glue to There you go, that's, that's how you put on the uh, edge banding with, um, of a veneer with this hot melt glue. It's pretty cool. Okay, okay so uh, thank you so much for uh, coming along and checking out all our videos and hope you enjoyed uh, this particular one. It was kind of a New Year's weekend uh, collection. Uh, activities uh, please do like and share this video please hit the thumbs up on the bottom do thumbs up yeah, thumbs up and then um, be sure to subscribe to this channel and please uh, pass it on to others you you may uh, think or might be interested in this kind of activities that we're doing uh, if you live in the Orange County area and want to build one of these garden chairs uh, please uh, contact us and uh, we'll set up an appointment um, the materials you bring yourself and then you come and use our facility jig and equipment and then uh, we just ask for a donation, whatever you think is appropriate, uh, to put the chairs together. And uh, we'll teach you how to build the chair, we'll teach you how to paint the chair, and how to do the uh, decorative uh, flower motifs there on the uh, arm rails. Uh, have a great week, and talk to you soon. Okay. Back after that. Okay, now ready to clap again. I'm gonna do another one. <clears throat> Wait, without poking me in the eye.